Well, we can't talk about social media in South Africa without acknowledging the hugely powerful cultural identity known as Black Twitter. Uh, week on week, this uh, online community drives conversations and trending topics in South Africa, from engaging on national issues to rallying behind Casta Semenya. Um, and of course, uh, we also hear there, there are tweets around US Twitter, we're coming for you. Uh, to help us understand what all of this means, we're joined by Brands I CEO JP Klopas, uh, and he's here to help us understand the interesting insights on the social media space. It's lovely to see you here, uh, and not too. through the Thank Cape you. Town camera. Um, Black Twitter. I think everybody has their own understanding of, of what Black Twitter is. So what's the official uh, word on the street on what we're talking about? As we've looked at it, I think we've realized that it's, it's a very big concept. So it's not, not just in people's minds. I think South Africans are scared of race on some issues. And so to talk about Black Twitter almost seems controversial. So we thought, well, let's look at the statistics at mm. least just to quantify it. How well, many people... Did someone create Black Twitter or has it just happened? No, I think it's just happened. As, as black people in South Africa have started tweeting, black Twitter's emerged. It's not just a South African concept, it's all around the world, uh, but it's now become a kind of a, an identity, if you like, mm. what's happening on black Twitter. And you sometimes see these uh, parallels or sort of people talking in opposition to each other mm. across mm. different, you know, white Twitter and black Twitter. Mm. So what's the fundamental difference between the conversation that would happen on Facebook, as an example, versus the conversation that would happen on Twitter? And we're seeing the graphic uh, up there now. So what, what we're looking at here is the demographic breakdown between the two platforms. On the left, we've got Twitter. On the right, we've got Facebook. And we see that on Twitter, the, the red block is black Twitter. Mm -hmm. So 20% of the conversation is black Twitter, 16% is white Twitter, and that, that's really the, the distinction. Is black Twitter just black people tweeting, or is it certain conversations that black people are talking about? Black people tweeting. So okay. here, here's, we, we've analyzed the names of people and where our classifier has got a very high probability of knowing that this person is a black person because of their name, mm -hmm. then, then we can look at it in that sense. So the reason that doesn't add up to 100 is because there's a, a big conversation that is unknown. Yeah. You know, we don't know which, yeah. but because it's a representative sample, we can use these stats. On the right, we see that Facebook is more heavily skewed towards a more white conversation that happens mm -hmm. on Facebook th th than on Twitter. All right, so if we move on uh, from that, so the kind of topics that Black Twitter has been latching onto uh, in South Africa, what, is, what are some of the big things that they're talking about? I, th I think just before we get there, it's mm. important to note just the reach of Twitter versus mm. Facebook. Because in one of the slides that will come up in a second, we see what we call OTS, opportunities to see, and we see it's just huge. There it is. Talk to us there. So th this is eyeballs that, that have the potential of seeing a tweet or a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I share it and I have 500 followers, there are 500 potential impressions. We know that's not the actual number, yeah. but it gives you an indication of reach. Yeah. And Twitter is just so much more powerful in its breadth of reaching people. Mm. Uh, so we see that black Twitter is really that red 75 million opportunities to see in South Africa wow. on Twitter, which is a staggering amount. Uh, that's that's more it. than the population. That's more than the population. Yeah. I think what's worries, what worries me about this figure is that if we take a look at the themes, and I know we're going to talk about that now, uh, Black Twitter has also become synonymous with uh, almost cyberbullying. So if they, they latch onto something that somebody said and they don't agree with it, it's almost like a whole mob that will come and address you. And if you look at that, now, that's 75 million people not, potentially. Not 75 million people. I think that's an important distinction. It's yeah. opportunities to see. So. Mm. so I tweet and you tweet and we have 100 followers that are in common, that'll be counted as 200. I see. That makes sense? I see, yeah. And so that, that's kind of multiplied across a whole population. There's a lot of people in common mm. yeah. uh, between the different co conversations happening. It more just gives an indication of the level of the conversation, yeah. that, there's, that there's a lot of stuff happening. And so the themes of the conversations we can understand by looking at the, the dominant hashtags yeah. um, around Black Twitter. What do those look like? So if we, if we look at the dominant hashtags, so in the last six weeks, of the 50 biggest hashtags, 46% of them were related to TV and radio. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the breakdown of mm -hmm. these, just in, in, in those kind of the entertainment ones, 86% of that is driven by Black Twitter. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
that, that, that's massive. It means that we actually have a huge population. What the white people are doing, I don't know when it comes to Twitter. But certainly, they, there's a lot of rallying around entertainment that we see on Black Twitter, and it's big. And for example, Our Perfect Wedding, you can see that each of these things trends every, well, Our Perfect Wedding on a Sunday. And as the show airs, you see people commenting on what, what mm. they want to see, what mm. they prefer, what they like, what they don't like. What's interesting about this is that actually a lot of these shows are on Sunday. So, I mean, Oscar Man's a daily show on radio, but Idols is on Sunday. Our Perfect Wedding is on Sunday. Isibai is a, is a daily, uh, uh, Monday to Friday. When do you have Rockwell time to, to watch all exactly. these things? No, I only ever watch TV on Sundays, oh. and this is all I ever watch. Yeah, I, I had to ask a man to figure <laughs> out what all the shows were. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're not familiar to me. <laughs> Fair enough. So, but uh, the, the, um, the issues like uh, politics and elections, that's not, inter I mean, it's not classified as something that people find entertaining. This is television, fiction, Correct. shows. Correct. And, and we're going to look at just, so how, how do brands leverage this? How do they mm. use uh, influencers and black Twitter? And how does that play out, not just in the entertainment space, but in the, in the yeah. corporate space? Mm. Yeah. So if we, we've got two examples to look at tonight. Yeah. And the one is on Clover. Yeah. So what we see with Clover, here, here we look at engagement, people speaking about Clover on social media platforms in South Africa. And we see as they use either sponsorships or events, so the sponsorship is the FC uh, Baroka sponsorship, and then Minnie Delamini, they got her into their Tropica Island of mm. uh, treasure. Yeah. Okay. And she only tweeted 10 times or posted 10 times, and that drove 30% of the engagement sure. through that whole time. That's amazing. And July was 240% up on June. She has over a million t uh, followers, so yeah. that again is, comes back to the issue of reach. So, so she, she, it would appear that she has a reach not just on black Twitter because we mm -hmm. see both kind of black and white increasing over that time. But if we then look at Telcom, we see they, they uh, uh, back idols. Idols yes. moved from Mnet to Mzanzi Magic this year. Yes. And just in that move, they, they've had four times more conversations on Mzanzi mm -hmm. in the first six months of 2016 than the whole of 2015 on Mnet. Okay which is staggering. And here you see actually them backing idols on Mzanzi Magic has, has massively driven uh, the black Twitter conversation mm. as people have en engaged with idols. And that's it, been very successful for Telco. Is it translating into sales, into more product buy-in? I mean, comment, yes, but sales? I think what, what it does, if we look at the next slide, you'll see the we, we kind of strip out the conversation which is related to sponsorship, mm -hmm. yeah. and we look at the conversation without that. And there, there we see it's actually a very different story. So mm. to come to your question, David, mm. we, do, we don't know yet. I think that, that's where looking at the kind of longitudinal industry views that we do. You know, for mm. every month we look at the best and the worst in the different industries. And we do see telecom edg edging forward. They're actually getting better in that. You know, customers are starting to uh, feel better loved by telecom, for lack of a better mm. word. Whether that's related to them providing better services for them actually deploying different um, methodologies on social media, I think that's where it's hard to tell in the short term. Yeah. It would have been interesting to see the backlash uh, they got for their Women's Day uh, advert because they, 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 put it, they put up a Women's Day advert with only white women and said something about, we're so proud of your efforts. Mm. And uh, black Twitter went wild and said, but where are the black women? Yeah, and, and, and that was, I think, for them a case of just, not, because they had a whole campaign, and that was one of the images. And that just happened to be the first image It happened as to well. be the one on Facebook. They went in a, in a different order. So I think it was partly unlucky, unlucky mm. partly just it's, poor strategy. Oh, social media is so but, dicey. But it can just kind of burst into flames, as you very say, quickly. very quickly. Very quickly. Well, let's uh, turn our focus to the trend of the week now. I suspect that we are going to be looking at uh, all things Olympics. So it is the Olympics? Of course. Yes. <laughs> of course, the Olympics, yeah. I wonder bring, if it would have been medals. without Wade for Nickirk and uh, Custer yeah. Semenya. Yeah. No. no. I mean, if we look at the word cloud, that, that's it. Just the conversation just about Wade for Nickirk and Custer Semenya is almost five times bigger than idols. So to put it in context, it's big. It's, but it's only like a few percent behind the whole yeah. run-up to the elections in terms of the conversation yeah. that happened inside. Oh, yeah. So, but Wade for Nickirk was just, everyone was just thrilled.
Yeah. And, it, and yes, he had a chance, but no one expected breaking the world record no and the ways. way yeah. he ran. Yeah, exactly. Costa Semenya, a different kind of case. Yes, she's going to win, probably, but there's the controversy about gender. There, there's, and she, has, she hasn't even run yet. I mean, yeah. if I missed something, I missed, well, I missed something. Yeah. Not the final. 2.30 a.m. on Sunday. So the final hasn't happened. Yeah. You know, so she's still got her moments in the sun. So we're going to see a lot more conversation about that. But I think, it, you know, we've often speak about social media coming of age. And, uh, and mm. th th I think this has been a, a case of South Africans can be proud just how both black and white Twitter, it was Twitter in general in South Africa that stood up in defense. And so, two so years ago, they didn't do that. Was you know, it, it was a kind a of nationalistic uh, contest here where South Africans tweeting at Americans who were tweeting back? Is that how it works? No, I, I don't think it was so much them tweeting back. I think it could, it's more drowning out any voices yeah. coming yeah. from anywhere else. Maybe. Put this into context for us, JP. How does this uh, re um, compare to, for example, the conversations around the local government elections as we were uh, in, the, in the midst of electioneering about a week or two ago? The, the Olympic conversation versus that conversation. So ju just the conversation about Costa and um, Wade. Is, is pretty much the same size as the elections conversation. Wow, the whole election conversation. Whole election. Should we, can you should, imagine? Can we, can we expect then that uh, uh, come Sunday morning uh, when Casta clinches gold right. that you know we, we, we ex we're yeah. going to expect a, a spike again. Yeah definitely. And uh, what sort of numbers are we talking here? Numbers of tweets? Well it'll, uh, the, the elections was we're looking at 130,000 people talking so this is of that order of magnitude. Sure. People talking about about the Olympics. Just beautiful. It's so great to see South Africans rallying behind our sportsmen. Mm. And of course, outside of South Africa, there are South Africans, there are other athletes that I think everybody's following. I was watching uh, Usain Bolt this morning yep. uh, when I was at gym. And uh, one would suspect that they would also be key drivers uh, of everybody yeah. wanting to talk a little bit about them. Correct, yeah. For, for tonight's purposes, we looked at the South African conversation, and Usain mm. Bolt, because of his association with Wade van Niekerk and that kind mm. of interplay that happened between them, mm. uh, he's emerged as a big theme in the South African conversation as well. But on a global stage, yeah, he's, he's next level, you know, I, I and then Michael Phelps. I think it's interesting to even go back to the hashtag because the hashtag is hands off Custer. We've seen that hashtag in other contexts. Mm -hmm. For example, when uh, President Jacob Zuma was under fire, it became oh, hands off our president uh, by the Women's League deciding to defend him. We even saw it during, I mean, when did uh, President Jacob Zuma have his rape trial? Uh, 2007. 2007, 8. Yeah, so. That hashtag sort of was birthed from there. So d does this, is this crystallizing into a South African um, no, I don't, I don't identity? The, the, the hands, hands off, off, yes. The hands off, I'm not sure. Mm. That I'm not sure. We'd have to go and look at that. But certainly the kind of crystallization around a hashtag for people to rally behind, yeah. that, definitely. Yeah. Well, JP, as always, we have to end somewhere, but the, the tweeting goes on forever, it seems. Never stops, never yeah. sleeps, like, like yeah. the big cities. Yeah, good. That's Brands I see uh, JP Kloppers. So we're going to shift focus. Well, we haven't really left the political arena yet, yeah. uh, but we, we're going to focus been back on it. Right, right from the beginning. But uh, when we come back, uh, speaking more politics uh, and looking at uh, the ANC Youth League and also bringing you uh, snippets of the conversation with the Commander in Chief of the Economic Freedom Fighters, uh, Julius Malema.